Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this two-part video you should be able to describe what's meant by a convex lens. You should then be able to draw ray diagrams to show the formation of an image by a convex lens. And all of this is for triple physics students only. In a previous video we looked at the idea of refraction. We saw that light waves can change direction when they change speed, going from one medium to another. When light waves move from air into glass, they slow down and bend towards the normal. When they then move from glass back to air, they speed up again and move away from the normal. So in this video, we're looking at convex lenses. Convex lenses have this shape. As you can see, convex lenses are thicker at the center than at the edges. I'm showing you here the symbol for a convex lens, and it's important that you learn this as you'll be seeing it a lot. Now the key feature of all lenses is that they refract light. As you can see the light ray bends towards the normal when it passes into the lens and then away from the normal when it passes out of the lens. I'm showing you here parallel rays of light passing through a convex lens. There are two important points about this. Firstly the central ray passes through the lens without being refracted. That's because this ray is passing directly along the normal. We say that this ray is passing along the principal axis, in other words the centre of the lens. All of the other rays refract and they're focused on a point. We call this the principal focus and that has a symbol capital F. The distance from the centre of the lens to the principal focus is called the focal length. Different convex lenses have got different focal lengths, depending on the strength of the lens. Okay, we're going to look now at how to produce ray diagrams for a convex lens. We're going to start by placing the object at least two focal lengths away from the lens, and I'm showing that here. First, we draw a line from the top of the object passing straight through the centre of the lens without changing direction like this. Now we draw another line from the top of the object. This line runs parallel to the principal axis. When this line hits the lens, it's refracted through the principal focus. And I'm showing that here. Where the two lines meet shows us the top of the image, and here it is. Now this image has three key features. Firstly, as you can see, the image is smaller than the object. Scientists say that the image is diminished. Secondly, the image is inverted, in other words upside down. And lastly, this is a real image. Now this last point sometimes confuses students. With a real image, the rays actually meet at a point. If we placed a screen there, then we would see the image on the screen. Okay, now we're going to move the object so it's between one focal length and two focal lengths from the lens. We construct the ray diagram in exactly the same way as before. So first we draw a line from the top of the object passing straight through the centre of the lens without changing direction. Now we draw another line from the top of the object running parallel to the principal axis. Remember that when this line hits the lens, it's refracted through the principal focus. And where the two lines meet, show us the top of the image. Now I'd like you to look at this ray diagram and try to describe the three properties of this image, just like we did before. So pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, firstly, this image is larger than the object. In other words, it's a magnified image. Secondly, the image is inverted, and remember that inverted means upside down. And finally, the image is real. Again, we can tell that because the rays actually meet at a point, and we'd see an image if we placed a screen there. So as you can see, the properties of the image depend on the distance between the object and the lens. If the object is more than two focal lengths from the lens, then the image is diminished, inverted, and real. However, if the object is between one and two focal lengths from the lens, then the image is magnified, inverted, and real. In the next video, we'll continue looking at how to construct ray diagrams for lenses. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on lenses in my vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.